to bring hyper relevance to reality, you know, organizations are going to have a, are going to have to have a data capability, and that data capability is going to have to be able to fuse data, going to be able to, you know, aggregate data from different data sources, data that is authentic, and data that is regulated, and that doesn't cross any privacy boundaries, and 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 you'll be able to take that data. And, imply, and put on top of it a range of intelligent systems to be able to drive insights. And those insights are going to be used to hyper-personalize experiences at the individual level. And this is going to be a key driver in the way consumers buy brands or shift brands. So a hot topic in the market around digital is data. We often say that data is the rocket fuel for digital. And there's you know, wonderful discussions around data, but there's also a lot of concerns about data. In terms of the opportunity that data brings, so firstly, data is in abundance. It's almost a commodity. Every company, every government department has more data than they know what to do with. So the real question is, is sort of how do you use the data? And we refer to that as applying the insights at the point of need, and we call that applied intelligence. So firstly, the step away from just data or big data and stepping into the application of that data and the application of the insights is a key capability that has to be built in organizations. Um, and then when it comes to the, the application of insights, you know, using insights just for the sake of using insights will not be of significant value. You're gonna to have to use that insights to either make a difference to your top line, so actually driving you know, more products or more services through the channels that you're servicing and being able to measure that. You know, secondly, using data at the point of need to make sure that your operational efficiencies are at the level that you need it. And ultimately, to actually show that the more you apply these insights um, across your products, across your services, across your operations, you know, the better your organization is becoming in terms of you know, customer acquisition, customer retention, or overall operational costs. If you can't associate or link, you know, the running of the business to the use of, you know, applied intelligence and data, then there's probably no reason to spend time and effort um, in, in driving these new capabilities around applied intelligence. But obviously, if you don't, and other companies do, I think they're going to be significantly ahead in how they launch products and services and how they run the operations to companies. So if we take all of this sort of macro and business and government context and make it sort of very personal in terms of digitals and digital professionals, where's all this going and what does this mean for us? Um, and I, I sometimes use this illustration of the car industry um, as a means to show why it's important to bring different skills and different roles together. So in the car industry today, 99.9% .9 of all cars are sold still out of traditional showrooms. If you look at the European and the US market, more and more cars are actually being sold through digital showrooms. Um, believe it or not, most consumers today know exactly what car they want and they're just, they just busy figuring out the extras and the particulars. And so the ability to blend a digital showroom and a physical showroom is a great opportunity in the industry. Now to be able to do this, to be able to blend a physical and digital world, to run campaigns differently, to be able to connect with consumers differently, to make sure that you're dealing with your distributors and your after service differently, you actually need a combination of very different people around the table to maximize that opportunity at the end of the day for the automotive industry as an example. And if you think about the type of people that you need today, it's not just industry people or business people, it's a range of skills. And we talk about those skills in terms of you know, you need analyzers, people that can you know, really analyze the industry and the issues. Um, you need visualizers. You need people who can take this analysis and these issues and, and make it tell a story. You need storytellers. You need people who are able to, to write business and technical problems in a way that can be digested at a very human level. You need industry subject matter experts, people who know the industry significantly well. Um, you need data scientists. You can build models so that the data comes to life. Um, you need technologists um, who are able to underpin um, this with the new type of technology like AR and VR. And so these are the new roles that are appearing that we wouldn't have thought were equally important to the traditional roles today. And from a digital perspective, when we look to hire um, 
you know, newcomers into the industry or people to complement the staff that we already have. We really look for these new roles. We look for entrepreneurs, we look for storytellers, we look for analyzers, we look for visualizers, we look for technologists. And, and we look to blend all of those skills together to be able to, um, to answer the type of problem as I use, for example, in the automotive industry. And then how do you actually house all those skills in one place? I mean, those are very different people um, with very different aspirations and very different backgrounds. And, you know, we call that a culture of cultures. I think, and that is the new organization. Not only do you need digital first mindset people in the organization, but you need the organization. You need organizations of the future to be able to manage and be able to, you know, to create an environment that is a culture of cultures to accommodate these different experiences and backgrounds. Thanks for taking the time to watch and I hope it sparked a few thoughts.